Good morning, guys. It's uh, Monday morning. Um, I don't even know the date, but anyway, it's January, some some first week of January, I believe, or the second week. Anyway, um, I, I got that hose and put it on, and um, didn't have any problems with putting it on. Now you can see why I had to have the boom up in the air so that this part of the crowd would be forward because I couldn't get a wrench on that. But I put it together and <clears throat> I just want you to know like this is a flared fitting which means it's metal to metal where the, where the seal is. But I did put a little bit of, of um, anti-seize compound on the threads only. Just enough so that, you know, it's not going to be like it was to try and get it off, because that thing was murder. But I will say that it did look like it was previously replaced, that hose. Or, maybe I shouldn't say that. What I should say is, when that hose that was on was put on, it looked like they may have cross-threaded the first thread. And that's what made it so hard, I think, to get off. But anyway, I touched them up a little bit, and I put a little bit of anti-seize on there, and it's not leaking or dripping. It's, it looks good. Same thing with this. I put a little bit of anti-seize on here. Now, this one wasn't leaking at all or anything, but um, I like getting new hoses on equipment because it's just, you know, one of those things. And I need to take care of this. I had a bracket on here, and I hit a backed into a tree in the woods naturally. But um, I'm gonna take this and replace this hose while I'm at it because this one doesn't look too good. But at $145 a pop, I think I'll do one a month and see how that works out. These these don't really look. I mean, they're pretty old, but at least they're holding and not leaking. You can see the type of catastrophe it is here to change a bunch of hoses. I mean, this is this is ridiculous in here. You can't get a wrench between them. You have to start at one end and take them all off all the way across. So it's something that if it needs to be done, I'll do it. But if it doesn't need it, I'm not doing it. So anyway, that's where we were at so far. Uh, and as far as the thumb goes, I think we had good conversation on the thumb and stuff for a while. I'm not um, ready to use the backhoe at the moment with the thumb because for one thing I only got a baby log over there to play with but I have some trees that I, uh, are coming soon and I should have a big load coming in the next couple months so then I'll get back on the saw milk. Of course I want to plane everything that's in there once spring comes and stack it in the greenhouse and then I'll go from there but um, yeah so this is in good shape now temporarily I should say yeah, I need to do something with this this isn't any good here flopping around in the breeze so I really like this machine I, I've always liked this I've, I've had John Deere I've had um, I'm talking about tractor loader backhoes now I've had John Deere case and cat and I just like this thing there's something about it that I've always liked it, it's always done what I asked it to do, and uh, yeah, I had some problems with hoses and different little things when they first started making these, but I just like them. I haven't had any problems with them, and I'm not a Ford guy either. Hey guys, check it out. I got this uh, dump truck started. It actually started relatively quickly after it charged the battery. What a difference between yesterday and today. It's like 14 degrees out, everything's frozen. I brought this generator because the little one was charging but it was taking forever. This one here had a lot more soup to it. So it got the uh, thing charging good. And uh, yeah, I, I'm low on antifreeze and that could have been for any reason. Hopefully there's no leak. Nothing's coming out the bottom of the truck anywhere. And, um, man, my hands are frozen. Nothing's coming out of the bottom of the truck. It has good oil pressure and it has, uh, the gas. Uh, the other day I had said that I had, had not started the truck for about a year, and that's true. But 
during that year I was still putting additives to the gasoline every now and then and I just dumped five gallons of gas in one of the forward tanks or the forward tank and um, you know that'll help to freshen the gas up a little I know it's not the best way to do it but there's really no good way of draining these gas tanks so I'm just gonna let the truck run um, once it gets mixed up to a little bit I put some uh, alcohol or not alcohol but uh, um, injection cleaner into the gas as well so hopefully this thing will stay running for me like I say it, it's a good truck it just gave me trouble every now and then starting we're having like a ice storm I don't know if the temperature way up in the sky is warmer or what, but it's a nice storm, but it looks like snow, so I don't know what's going to happen. We're only supposed to have an inch, though. Just enough to make things miserable. One of the brakes are, uh, uh, one of the brakes on it are stuck. Or not, and it's not stuck, but it's bound up a little bit. It's, the truck will move, but it wants to stop right away. Um, I think it's probably one of the rear brakes. I think there are drum brakes on there. I'm not positive though. Anyway, you can see that it started and moved. I don't know if the brake lights worked on it and stuff, but it's going to have to be gone over before I can license it. So I'll have to do that. Um, as long as I know there's no mice in the truck, I'll bring it into the garage. So, see what happens here. When I first tried the dump body after it was running about 10 minutes, it didn't want to go up because... And I've had trouble with this before in the winter time. There's a cable that goes back here. And for some reason the cable freezes up and I can't move the control for up and down but you can see that it goes up and it's really not that bad yeah it's got a rusty color to it but it's not bad it's not uh, this is something that should be salvaged not uh, scrapped oh yeah Probably some brake lines and stuff need to be replaced. But um, I think this thing is worth fixing up. In the past, uh, I don't know, 10 years, this truck has hardly done any work. I mean, I probably 
I probably put about 3,000 miles on it in 10 years time and because most of it was just moving around here and see there's some rust here they, they have a lousy bed design here you can see where it goes up inside or you get dirt up in between the two panels or water I mean and you can't get it out I fixed it once before there's some ice in this I I didn't pick the body up the last time I parked it because I was afraid if I had to move it and I couldn't get the body down that I would uh, I'd be better off with it down so it doesn't have any holes in it I don't believe it might be there might be one I don't even see any holes in that bed no. tires are dry rotted, I'm going to have to buy new tires for it if I put it on the road. Nice wheels. <laughs> yeah. I'll bet you these wheels must have cost $150 to $200 a piece these fancy stainless steel things on here. They had nut covers. I had them, I don't know where I have them. I have them somewhere because they were always, I was losing them and I, they were like, I don't know, 20 bucks for three. So, well, I'm glad this thing is running. Now, if I can keep it running all winter, you know, starting it every now and then, every week, that'll give me something good to work on come spring. I'd like to get it in my garage, but I have a, another vehicle that I want to fix for somebody before I do this. And I also, I wasn't getting any heat in the uh, heater core. The thing is, is both of the heater core pipes are nice and hot. The reason I'm not getting anything in there is inside this truck behind the dash, or behind the glove compartment, there's a valve that turns the hot and cold switch for the water. And I had turned it to cold because it was giving me such a hard time with being so hot. You can hear it missing, probably from the gas. But it may need a tune-up, so I could do that as well. Now you see this is broken. Disc brakes. I thought they were drum brakes, but they're uh, disc brakes in the back there. Well, it's about three hours later, and the truck is still running. I put the body down on it, but I have the truck on a slant, so the water should run off of the back of it <coughs> if we get any more rain or whatever. God knows what's going to happen with this uh, snow. But there's still nothing leaking under the truck, no antifreeze or anything like that. The truck is missing pretty hard, though, and, I'm, and I really think it's from the gas but this is a distributor in here, so it might need a complete tune-up, which I'll do to it. I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, I keep it so that I, it's running and it'll start when I need it to start to be able to fix it and get it in and out of the garage. 
So three hours later, it's still running. Let's check the gauges in there. You can see the fuel tanks down the quarter tank there, which is actually good. I wanted as much of it out as I could get out, and then I'll put all new fuel in it probably tomorrow. So it's been running at 2,000 RPM for the last three hours. <coughs> Okay, so the temperature gauge is good, the oil pressure is good. You can see the mileage on there, I had said, had a lot of miles on it. Guys, it's hard to say whether or not that mouse stuff that I put near there chased the mice out. Uh, pest, what the heck did they call it? Some kind of a pesticide, I guess. But I guess um, it's hard for me to tell you whether it's working or not. But what I can do is, uh, what, I, what I do is when it snows, I walk around the vehicle sometimes to see if there's any footprints in the snow. Believe it or not, if you know the mice will come out to grab something to eat somewhere. So... I can't really tell that right now because there's not enough snow, but um, all I know is that it seems like it's working. I mean, I, I don't know if it is or not, and the reason I say that is because we did get some snow the other day, and I, when I looked around the truck, I didn't notice anything that had made a path, you know, to the truck and then into the woods. So maybe that stuff is working all right. <laughs> um, it's hard to say. The only other thing I could do is when I go to get this in the garage in the next two weeks or so, I'll find out once, you know, it's in the garage because I'll set traps in there and, and bait just to see if there's any mice that come out of the truck. And if it does or not, I'll let you know what's going on. I mean, because if that stuff works, um, it ha having the mice in this truck had me so freaking aggravated knowing that they were coming in there. I mean, I was setting traps in front of the seat on the floor. Every night I was catching sometimes two or three mice. And it was getting crazy. I just, I ran out of traps. I had like 40 traps. So now, um, it seems like there's nothing in there, but I can't tell for sure. But I will be able to tell once I get it in the garage. So hopefully, you know, I don't have any troubles. I don't want to put, get mice in my garage because I, you know, if one comes in because the door's open or whatever, I, I can deal with that. But not when, you know, get, you get a whole horde like this might be. So, we'll see what happens. But anyway, guys, uh, now you know something else that I have going. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take me to get this thing all fixed up because it's not a priority at the moment. Of course, as soon as I start hauling logs, it'll be a priority. But anyway, have a good one, guys. Got to go get supper and relax a little bit tonight. And I also have machine shop work to do tomorrow now, so I'm not going to uh, be really working on anything outside. Have a good one.